Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wild Ride with Steve-O. This one is great news for anybody who loves music and super cool people because we fell in love with this guy. It's the lead singer of Korn, legend, and this is just good times. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Davis. Yeah, yeah What's dude. Up? I'd like you to meet my co-host, Scott Randolph. What's going on, what Jonathan? Scott? Off camera up at the front of the RV, we have Paul Brisky. What's going on, Jonathan? How are you? I'm just chilling, man. Yeah, dude. I'm super psyched that, that you agreed to do this. It was uh, oh, of course, man. fucking super cool. Are you in LA right now? Fuck no. I live in Bakersfield. <laughs> yeah, dude. Born and raised. <laughs> yes, sir. I hate LA. <laughs> Can't take it no more. Ah, dude. I got out. I got out like ten years ago. I just, I just. I mean, it, for some people, it's great. It just for me, I was born and raised here. I like more country stuff, and so I just kick it out here with my pickup truck. And I mean, but Bakersfield isn't really, really super hick. But I like doing redneck shit, so it's nice out here. Cool, man. Um, we have a mutual friend in common, Big J Okerson. Yes, I just talked to him yesterday. Oh, nice. Got, man, I love that guy. We took him out on tour. Uh, we did this tour with uh, Acre Meister. It was years back, and he was he opened for us. Right. So for the people who don't know who Big Jay Okerson is, he's a, a stand-up comedian. Yeah. An absolute master of crowd work. He's just the funniest guy. I, oh, I performed with him very early in my stand-up career, and I forget if it was like jokes. that he, I think he had a story about opening for corn, and that like the picture he painted of it was that trying to do stand-up comedy for a, you know in an arena for a, a rock and roll band as an opener is like it, it doesn't always work so it's like you good. doing stand-up in montreal at that right. rock fest yeah. it was it was all right but it was the best part of his act was all the hecklers he would just tear them new asses it was amazing <laughs> yeah how did uh, you guys come up with the idea to get big j to open for you um, it just came around. I mean, they just asked if we would be down for that. I think it came with the sponsors and all that. And they said, hey, we want to have this guy come out and do comedy. And we're like, that should, okay, I hope he's good. He's ready to get shit thrown at him. <laughs> but he, he he really did great. It wasn't like that. Every night I'd go out and watch him. My favorite part was when people would talk shit, he would just tear them apart. It was amazing. Yeah, he's yeah. quick with the crowd crowd work. He's super funny. Good guy. Yeah, dude. So, so you were talking to him just yesterday, huh? Like you, you talked to him frequently? Yeah, we kept in touch over the years. Um, when we play in New York, he comes out to our shows. And I just saw that someone tried to body slam him off a of stage the other yeah, night. They, they, oh, my God. Dude. I, I, I thought that, like, it, oh, he got knocked it was in over. Pennsylvania. Then I saw the footage, yeah. like, last night. And, dude, it was violent. Yeah. It was violent. That guy, that was because he was talking. Shit. Someone was talking shit to him, and he was doing what he does. And then just some guy came up from behind and and got him. So I was like, "Man, you gotta chill, bro." I called. I was like, "This is some. Shit. That's crazy." Did Not he get hurt coming up on stage? I, I he says he's okay, but man, he took a hard fall off that stage. The guy just that was fucked up. So he just like not checked cool. him off the stage. No, no, they, no. They no. Grabbed he was, his feet. He was, Oh, he just grabbed him and took him off stage. Yeah, he was sitting on a stool. The guy grabbed his uh, feet and the stage was a good five feet off the ground. So the guy grabbed his feet, yanks him off the stool and he comes forward all the way to the ground in front of the stage and lands like flat on his back, which is not healthy. Jeez. No. Jonathan, have you dealt with a lot of unruly crowds yourself? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's why I have. That's why I have my boy Sleepy. He's always looking out for me. There you go. Nice. D did you ever do the trick? I forget what they call it, but when you when you uh, instruct the crowd to 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 split into two groups, like down the middle, and then they all run at each other. What oh, you... that wall of death thing. Yeah. yeah. I I really we don't do that. Yeah, We've that's always been like the black. That's a straight like thrash cool thing. It's, it's cool at metal shows and. It's amazing to watch, but I've never had the crowds do that. Right. I like watching that shit. I think it's the first amazing. time I saw that was at Papa Roach. 
Like, oh, really? uh, uh-huh. I, for- I forget if I was doing a show with Papa Roach, but I just remember, like, you know, Jacoby, the the singer of Papa Roach, he's like, all right, everybody split up, and then on the count of three, run into each other. And I'm thinking, dude, you can't do that. That's like a lawsuit. Yeah, Fucking, that's like Braveheart big- shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a real big lawsuit. It's <laughs> yeah. so badass to see it, though. I've watched it at festivals in Europe, you know, those humongous crowds, and you just see them just bam and you just know someone's getting jacked up yeah it's insane. So, so you guys just put out a new corn album last year last year how long was it before that um before that was two two years two or three years um we always that was our this last record was our 13th record i mean we're putting them out all the time wow dude people are going crazy over this last one Yes, they really liked it. And then things got cut short because all this COVID stuff right. happening. But mm. um, we just started to tour it. But it's an amazing record. It was a hard record for me to make, but um, got through it. I've always used music and my music to how, how I deal with things. And uh, yeah, we got it. I got it done. It was good. It's not to say that, that they don't like all your albums, but I think that just looking at this this new one, there's you know people are really. Oh no, this on. one's some some hit. Some people get it, and then some people don't. It just you never know. But this one, people really, really liked. What was so hard about making this album? Just the experiences one, that you went through. Yeah, well, unfortunately, my uh, wife died of an overdose, so I had to um, go through that, and Fuck, um, it was hard. Yeah. And, you know, people, addiction and mental health issues, there's all these things going on. So um, I dealt with that, making that record uh, was hard. But, you know, I got through it. I'm, I'm good now. Everything's great. I think, got my uh, boys in it. Good. I think that your music generally has been pretty candid about various trauma and difficulty in life. Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's how I deal with it. It's not necessarily walk around being depressed all the time. <laughs> it's just, that is how I deal with my, the things that go on in life. And we all have shit going on in our life. It never stops. Um, you know, earlier records were a lot of me dealing with my childhood and stuff. But, you know, as each record goes on, you know, shit happens in life. And that's how I deal with it. So um, it's always been that that's some people, you know, go to therapy or church or whatever they want to do. And it's all good. But for me, I got to just get it out with my art. You feel like once you make the song, like you kind of close that chapter. Yeah, for sure. Done. Nice. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, there's so we, 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 of course, you know, looked into uh, like the whatever. So did some research. Yeah, and, dude. And, and did my I think my favorite thing that we learned about you is uh, working in the coroner's office. Yes, sir. I did that. I started when I was 17. Um, I did it. It was actually a, <laughs> it was actually a, a class in high school. It's called ROP, Regional Occupation Program. Yeah. So yeah. you go in there and they had all this. They wanted to do some something in the health industry. You know, people went and became, you know, we're doing all kinds of stuff, going to the hospital and being assistants and helping do all that stuff. And then the coroner's office came up and I was like, I was just at that time. I was so, I've always just been, I don't know, something about dark stuff has always grabbed me. So I'm like, I wonder what it's like to go cut up dead bodies. So <laughs> I went up, I did three interviews to get in. They had to do a psych background, everything. And I finally got in. And I started doing autopsies at 17. So I did that 17, 18. And then I went to Frisco and went to the San Francisco College of Mortuary Science and became a mortician. Came back here, was an embalmer. And then um, at night, uh, <laughs> at night, I would go to the coroner's office and I was studying to be an investigator. So I didn't have to get my hands dirty per se doing autopsy. I'd just be an investigator and go, go investigate, you know, deaths. And then I got, I got the call. Dude, and we come try out for porn, and that was it. That was amazing, out. dude. That's so cool. Yeah. My first cousin uh, on my mom's side is the same story, right there. Like uh, he was a super goth, like trench coat kid, <laughs> and right? uh, and straight up became a. He went to mortician school. I, I had a joke in my stand up that. Uh, when I was going to clown college, my cousin was going to mortician school, 
And right. our mothers were getting hammered, uh, debating whose son was a bigger <laughs> loser. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, oh. and, and uh, I think that both my my co- my cousin is still a funeral director. He he loves it. Like uh, something about death just kind of turns him on. You know, I mean, he yeah. he. Uh, I remember getting a call from him one time, and he's like, "Dude, dude, you know the the on the the warning on the soda machine." Like, you know, it says don't tip the machine. Like, it's got oh, a yeah. stick figure of the machine falling on someone. He goes, I got one. Oh, <laughs> my God, dude. He says, he, he was so excited that, that it's That's so, how that person that, died. That, that person died that, that way. That person died like that. What's, oh. the, uh, what's the most interesting cause of death you came across? Death by typewriter. Wow. Really? How does one die by typewriter? Remember the old school, if you guys are old enough, you know how they had the old steel desk sure. with the typewriter, you pop that thing up, someone went under and reached under, and it was those old, big-ass, heavy typewriters that were right there on their head. Just huh. concussion and some bleeding internally and done. That's by Fuck. typewriter. Jeez. So when you when you cut up a body, do you, like, how does that work? Do you cut up, like, the fingers, like you're a mobster, or no. do you, like, gut them and take the <laughs> organs out? And... Well, no, you start with, like, there's, like, a, a, a tent. The white fission. Uh, a Y incision, that's what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And is it is it true that the like, dead bodies, like dudes, get boners sometimes after they're dead? Or is that did I just that's make that up? That's, that's <laughs> that's I don't know. I, 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 that's just wishful thinking. <laughs> that's you getting a boner, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that came. I just, I just blacked out. I don't know what happened. I remember uh, my my cousin also said there was some movie forget if it was like uh but it was like a football movie or something and in the movie the the guys the football players were like laying down in the middle of traffic oh the program yeah the pro okay so i so, said all the cars so that so that became like a popular thing for people to do at the time like lay down in the road yeah and my cousin was just fucking stoked about it because he was like i get to go scrape people off the off the road <laughs> The, the guy that we met in Toronto yeah. for, for dinner, he, yeah. <laughs> he's so nice. Like, I know. He, I mean, he's totally a nice guy. And, and uh, I mean, I, it's just crazy. So there's speculation that the name Corn has uh, something to do with coroner. Like no. that, that it came from. So so the, 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 the two things I saw was that it was the, the coroner in Kern County or no. it was children of the corn. Nope. No, none of that. It's- Fucking horrible, this story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, well, now we're now we're excited. That's right, we're excited. And you know what else I'm excited about? This strap I wear on my right wrist. It's called a whoop band. And if you haven't heard about it, it's time you did. And if you have heard about it, it's time you got one. Why? Because it's the most effective fitness tracker out there. It tells me everything I need to know about my fitness, my heart rate variability, my strain, my sleep, my recovery. And I'm happy to report that just yesterday I had 92% recovery. Yeah, I felt great too. So what is it? It's a membership program, right? Works with this band that they give you for free. And it constantly monitors you. You don't even have to take it off to charge it because the charger fits right over the band. So boom. Now, I love this thing so much and I want you to try it. So here's how you do it. You go to whoop.com. That's W-H-O-O-P.com. And you use the promo code Stevo. You're going to get 15% off at checkout. Now, why are you going to do that? You're going to do that because you care about your fitness, your health, your well-being, and your happiness. And you also care about supporting Stevo by using the promo code Stevo at whoop.com. I love it. Never take it off. I haven't taken it off once since I put it on, and I don't ever plan on taking it off because I love that thing. Now, let's find out about corn. I'll just do it real short. Me and some of my friends in Baker from back in the day were at this party, and there was two gay guys talking about how they loved felching each other. Okay. And the one dude was talking that he was felching his lover, and the guy shit all over his face. He had a corn kernel on his tongue. Okay, got it. So that's how it came about. So people that knew the story, they were there. We just go corn, and be like, "Shut up, dude!" Be oh, goddamn, no, 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 no. That's funny. And that's how the name came about. But when I, 
nobody in the band when when I joined the band knew about the story. I'm like, I told them this story. I'm like, and they're like, oh, but it's such a cool name. Let's just do it. It was like we named it Corn, and then our manager Larry was like, hell no, you cannot name your band Corn. No, it's absolutely not. I go then we'll name it Larry. <laughs> and <he's> like, <laughs> I mean, the whole thinking behind it was like, it doesn't matter what you're called. It was like a punk rock thing. It's like, fuck, we're called Corn. Who cares? It isn't. I don't need any mysterious, weird fucking name. We made it like that. Right. It was cool because uh, Fieldy's like, dude, you got to write it with a backwards R like a little kid would write it. So I grabbed the crayon and I did it with my left hand. And that became the fucking, it was done in two seconds. And that's become that iconic logo. Wow. And it just, that's how it all came together was that. Huh. Nice. So, yeah, because, I mean, I've been asked when I was young, was all, yeah, it's dark and mysterious. But I was like, fucking Corn's is the dumbest name I've ever heard for a fucking band. But it's cool. That's the charm of it. It's like we didn't care. I loved the, that energy when we were young. We didn't give a fuck about nothing. Even the labels that told us what to do were just like, fuck you. I remember we did a photo shoot for Spin Magazine. <laughs> and the reason we made that cover, they put us in gorilla suits because when we got there, they wanted us to do some stupid shit like we were moshing in a mosh pit. And we're like, absolutely fucking not. We're not doing this. And it got to the point where we almost got in a fist fight with Spin Magazine, <laughs> with the people there, the photographers. It almost broke into a full on melee there. We're like, fuck you. We walked out. <laughs> and so they put us as gorillas. They superimposed our heads and put us on gorilla suits. And it was pretty funny. But we always were getting into trouble like that. Always. Wait, what year would that have been? Like 98, 97, 98. Uh-huh. So you guys, it was, you, it was good times. We were just didn't. We just we did what we wanted, and we didn't care who we pissed off or anything. It was amazing. Yeah, dude. So you guys formed in '93. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that's uh, a 27 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and we're still going, still doing it. And it's all the same. Um, all the same guys. Yeah. We got uh, our drummer. Uh, the original drummer left uh, 11, 12 years ago. So we got Ray. But he's been with us that long. He's been in the band longer than David was. So it's been the same. And uh, our guitar player had left for eight years and then he came back. So he's good. He had to get his life together. And it's been amazing. That's that's rad. So you hear about like bands, like say, like say, for example, Motley Crue, uh, you know, the yeah. kind of the, the story is the you know, the, they don't get along with each other. The only time they're ever all together is when they're actually performing on stage. They each have their own separate tour buses. Like, I guess that there's it's it's pretty common whenever like a, there's a great deal of success and a lot of money gets involved that like things go sideways. Like, did you guys right. ever have? Well, not really. We all got along pretty well. I mean, we had we'd fight. There was times there was incidents where we would get in fights, but that's just like we're brothers. Sure. You hang out with family, shit happens. But we've been very lucky that we all really respect. I don't. We love each other. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, it's like when we got downtime, not hanging out with nobody. It's like I hang out with you more in my own fucking family. I'll see you guys when we go on tour, and then I go home and do that. But um, we pretty much all get along really good. So it's been definitely a blessing. That rules, man. That, yeah, that super rules. I've seen them with tour with bands like that. They they, they got to take one guy out and this guy can't run <laughs> this guy and all mm-hmm. the like fuck. But they got to do it for the greater good because they all got to eat, you know. <laughs> so they, right. It, it's just how it goes. I, that would be miserable. I wouldn't want to be in that in that kind of situation. I that know. Just takes all the fun out of it. Yeah, you don't seem like the kind of guy that you know that operates that way. You seem pretty laid back. Yeah, yeah, way laid back. I feel like uh, I mean, when when I got sober, I've been sober for 12 years now, and uh, thank you. And I, remember, I feel like there was like you know when it, when meth would come up, I feel like in, around meth, and someone's like, oh yeah, like Jonathan Davis like had a real meth problem, and I did. You know, sometimes things come out of my mouth like that question, and I think, why did I say that? Happens a lot. Like, why would I say this? I have a favorite sponsor of this show, and, and it's a favorite by far. It's called HelloTushy.com. They make bidets. What's that? It's a device that cleans your butthole. And I'm so excited to have a HelloTushy.com device in the main bathroom downstairs. So yes, now Lux and I can both be pooping at the same time and both blast our assholes to perfect cleanliness. 
because that's how it works, right? You get done taking a big old sloppy dump. You're still sitting on the pot. You twist this little knob right here and blast. Yeah, like a pressure cleaner, cleaning off all of the poop. And then you grab some toilet paper just to dry it off. And for the satisfaction of knowing that there was no poop on the toilet paper. Yeah, that's why it's my favorite. And I do not ever want to take a poop anywhere but inside my own house because I love HelloTushy.com that much. And I'm so sure you're gonna love it that much too. That here's the deal. Go to hellotushy.com slash stevo and you get 10% off your order. Again, that's 10% off your order if you go to hellotushy.com slash stevo. And God, you and your butthole are going to thank me for it. Now, let's talk about meth. Yeah, tomorrow, actually, tomorrow's my 22nd fucking year. Wow. Nice, dude. Fuck, dude. It's insane, but yeah, I used to... Do hot rails like? <laughs> what are hot rails? Is that where you light up the the glass and then you snort it? Yeah. But that's just pre glass. It was <laughs> hot because it was like peanut butter, nasty fucking jet fuel crank. Ah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Then then they started cooking it with fucking ethanol or some shit, and then the glass came around. And I got out right when glass started kicking because you could do that and you would be up for three days off one line. Ah. That crazy shit. But ugh, it makes me sick just thinking about that shit. Ah, oh, dude, but when I, I think was, about drugs, I get like, I mean, I, I just fucking love drugs, man. Like, I mean, I, I can't no, do I, them. I, I love that <laughs> drug right there. Just when you did it, the initial fucking burning all that shit and that nasty shit that would leak out your body, that's what makes me sick. But I ain't gonna lie, I loved it. You feel like you're <laughs> fucking Superman. Yeah, you for sure. You can do anything. Yeah, did, it was amazing. I love drink. I love party. I loved all that shit but did that all start before corn was blowing up or was that something that came no, like with it started success? before corn blew up uh-huh oh, so we you were embalming in... bodies doing meth <laughs> <laughs> tuesday night in baker in bakersfield <laughs> fuck no 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 i started doing meth when i was <laughs> when i moved to huntington beach and there's a lot of meth there from bakersfield and our uh <laughs> i got hooked up with someone that was giving me tons of it there so um, like on the first album, we have a title called Helmet in the Bush. <laughs> it's about meth. Ah, That's what geez. happens. So I started doing meth then. That was the first record. And then I got sober right after we did the third record. So I stopped meth when we started touring because I couldn't function. There's no way I could be up for two days and tour and keep it together. And I had to stop. So the day we took off on tour, our first tour was with House of Pain and Biohazard. We got in our trailer and I we built bunks and I just went in that bunk and I slept for five fucking days, got up and played a show, and that's when I kicked it. Wow. Rad, man. Oh, First so, time. You, so you never toured while you're doing meth. Like uh No, that it was impossible. I couldn't do meth and fucking tour. I just it wouldn't work. So I started drinking and then I became <laughs> a raging alcoholic. And and cocaine occasionally when I could find it. But yeah, just they go hand in hand. Sure. So when you were doing meth or, 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 you know, even with cocaine, did you have like cool psychosis where you were hearing voices and hallucinating and stuff? I, I was always smart enough <laughs> to know when to put it down. <laughs> when I start thinking, I start getting paranoid or weird, I would just, I'd go to bed. But I saw a lot of people do that shit. One of my meth dealers, I went to his house and he had holes on the walls where he was saying, there's, there's cameras in the walls, man. And and I'd start talking to people like the, they're following, following me in helicopters and I could see the agents in the bushes. It's like, oh, my God, you need to go to sleep. <laughs> um, I never got the weird, crazy psychosis, but I, I met a lot of people that did. And that was when it gets scary. Oh, yeah. I love psychosis, man. I, I, I just... <laughs> I love, that was the goal for I Steve. Yeah. yeah, that was like, I, I like, he like, was just a topper. Yeah, I just had it. That was why I wanted, you know, and that's why like, when, I, when I think back on, on drugs, and like, I, I, that's what I miss. I miss watching the people walk around, you know, my apartment who weren't actually there. This fucking oh, shit was awesome. Um, so so here, here's an interesting thing. I think, you know, being a couple guys who, who have been at it for, for a considerable amount of time. I noticed that now, you know, I'm a uh, fuck, dude. I'm in the back end of my 40s over here. Like right. Jackass came out just about 20 years ago now, 
And yeah, it's been that long? It's, it was October 2000 when it first came out. And right. I've, you know, not necessarily, I don't, I'm not interacting with as many people now, but over, like, say, the last few years, it just, it's, right. it strikes me how, like, little kids, you know, little kids will be excited to see me, you know, like, for, and yeah. I'm just like, I, I feel like Matthew McConaughey and Dazed and Confused, you know? I get older, they just stay the same age. Same age. Right, do you Dude, find I that? Told, I told my kids, I was doing this with you, and they're like, that's rad, Steve. I go, wow, how the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the kids yeah. get younger. Yeah. And they stay the same age. And then the corn shows, oh, people would think there's a lot of older people because we were an older band, but there's just kids, there's still kids there. Right. What freaked me out is, the fans that were uh, coming to our shows in the 90s and shit now have kids, and those kids are coming to the shows. So it's kind of a crazy it, – it's weird. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I feel you. So, so you have the same experience, huh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's cool, man. You always want kids around. They, they know what they sure. think. They yeah, you got the youth. Cool. Yeah. You got the youth. You're how, doing something right. How old are your kids? I have a 24-year-old, <clears throat> 24, 13, and 15. Okay, oh cool, man. I think maybe maybe because because I've become pretty active on YouTube, I think that got me in with uh, a yeah, lot of kids. Yeah. They know they love they watch the old Jackass stuff and then they watch they they, they know watch everything. Super it's hard to keep up with those little fuckers. Super rad. So what uh like like the big festivals? There were there what was there? We saw something there with the Download Festival and you you were going over in England to play the Download Festival and then. Yeah. You had like some crazy like medical condition oh. where you were bleeding. The platelets or low like platelets. A, what, what yeah, was that it? was called ITP. I got that shit from taking an antibiotic called Caflex. That shit. It at the time they're like, no, 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 it's not Caflex. But if you go on their website now, you'll see it on the fine print. May in rare cases cause ITP. So I took this stuff a doctor gave me, and I was on the antibiotic, and all of a sudden I started going to. I went to Europe to go on tour. And started seeing bruises pop up on my body. I'm like, what the fuck? And so I'm, I'm, whatever. Okay, I got bruises. I go crazy on stage. Fine. Next thing I know, I go, I think it was a show in Germany. And I go to go to the bathroom and I start pouring blood out of my ass. It's like mm. pouring out of my ass. So I'm like, holy fuck. So, of course, I'm like, nothing's wrong with me. I go play a show. <laughs> I go back after that, pouring blood. I call a doctor. I'm like, what the flying fuck is going on? They're like, why don't you go to the doctor? get on this boat. We, we were going from Germany to London. So I got on a boat, I slept, I went on the boat, I got there, went to the doctor and he started examining me and he's like, Oh, this was fucking horrible. bro." He put a speculum in my ass, bro. Okay. <laughs> and like, I'm like, he's on, this is going to be uncomfortable. I'm sorry, but I got to do this. So he sticks a speculum in my ass and he looks up and there goes, yep, you're bleeding. I'm like, motherfucker, I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ask next time. <laughs> the speculum's like the duckbill kind of thing, right? Yeah. Where you put it in so you can... Uh... Yes. I'm like, man, what the fuck? I'm all fucking European. Oh, my God. Yeah. And anyway, he your, your... blood test. He makes you go back to the hotel. And he goes, I'll call you, let you know what's going on. And he calls me a little later. He goes, go directly to the hospital. Don't bump anything get there now. So I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm like, what? He said, your platelet counts five. You have no platelets. And those are basically what keep your blood in your veins. It is basically the, what your blood is. So I go there, they, they take tests. My platelet counts five. They're all tripping out. They give me a bone marrow test, which was hell. Um, and then they put how, me on steroids. How does a bone marrow test work? They nail a fucking spike into your hip. <laughs> and suck the bone marrow out. Wow, that was horrible. But anyways, they start put they put me on this. They said you have this thing called ITP, your immune system's killing your platelets. I'm like, oh, this is great. So they get my platelet count up to f over a hundred. I was there in the hospital for three or four days, and then I fly back home. And it took a year for it to normalize, but every so often my platelet count would go up. It would be good. It would be good. It would be good. And once I got off the medicine, it normalized. So I don't have it anymore. But it was scary because I I could have bled out. Jeez. Man, Being well, in my head and doing those shows, I could have fucking stroked out so easily. What's a normal platelet click count? Anywhere f above 100 and, what is it? 180 and above, uh, to 180 to like 400. Huh. Depends. The thing five we is saw, not good. Yeah, way more than five. <laughs> yeah, way more than yeah. five. The, the thing we saw said that you were bleeding out of your gums. Like your gums were just pouring blood? Um, My, my gums would bleed. 
um, anything. If I pinched myself like this, just a little pinch, a bruise would come up. There's no, they help line the walls of your, of your veins, I guess they told me, and you just bleed. It's crazy. So I was just like taking it easy and letting the music, letting them, the medicine work. And it worked good. It took me a year to get back to normal, mm. but did you have to cancel a bunch of dates? Not, what? Did you have to cancel a bunch of dates? Um, yeah, we had to cancel the tour. I had to fly back and Oof. find out what was going on. And yeah, that was scary. <laughs> um, but it got better and better as time went on and I won't ever take that stuff again. And that was, that happened when you were on your way to London to play the download festival. Yes. And that, so, I, and then I told the guys, I'm like, you got to go play this. Just get the fucking singers there to mouth through the words and at least try. Cause in Europe, if you don't show up, they get pissed. Yeah. It's just how that's the, how they're, I'm dying in the fucking hospital. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> so like, um, a bunch of singers, all the, the bands were there. They all pitched in and they, I think they did a six song set and got through it and then bounced home. That's and cool. I was there for three or four days and then I got to go home and I recovered pretty quickly and was back out on tour within six, seven months. Yeah, nice. The Download Festival is big, man. Do you know who the headliner was? <clears throat> Watch, it was corn. It was like <laughs> corn asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was us or someone at that time. Yeah. I think it was. Now it was I remember. I, I I went to the Download Festival one time to perform, and I mean, of course, it's like the biggest fucking stadium show you could possibly imagine, you know. Like, but then, field. then they had like a side tent, which is kind of like the B stage, and in the yeah. side tent, it the it there was like standing room only and five thousand people. So the side tent was no joke either. I did a I did a like a stunt set on the fucking side tent and i had this crazy manager at the time and he fucking says someone gave us like hundreds of crates of eggs just like fucking with there was like thousands of eggs and he's like i'm like what do we want to say i don't know like i don't know how where they came from or what <laughs> but but we came up with this fucking stupid idea right that when i finished my set i said to the whole fucking five thousand people in the tent i go all right, we're going to give out these fucking crates of eggs to the whole audience, all of you. And whoever the next band is that comes out on stage, just fucking let them have it. <laughs> like, oh, and we didn't even know who the next band was. And, and I, I can just imagine how offended you are by this story. I mean, it was a fucking terrible, offensive fucking idea. We just did it. So, But the, when life the, gives you lemons. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the next band that came out was... Uh, the fucking they were called the electric six right and they would wear these these fucking zoot suits they were they were wearing like <laughs> like suit and tie kind of deal you know and they come out sure enough they walk out and it's just a hailstorm of fucking eggs coming through the crowd they're, and they're just playing like to their credit they're going ahead and playing getting pelted they're slipping oh. around on the <laughs> stage it's all eggs and like and and then the fucking the band after the electric six was pennywise can you imagine yeah. how dead we would have been if fucking we got pennywise egg yeah those guys i, I mean dude. no that, they, they don't mess around you would get fucked up <laughs> we played with them before back in the day before we signed no yeah. one know what to do with this so we used to do gigs with pennywise yeah you don't <laughs> well, you don't fuck yeah. with them you don't fuck with them no and, and, and so i had this so now and it was like <laughs> there was like all this trailers in the back it was like the artist area and i was sitting there after the show with this with this chick who i was right and this guy from the electric six comes up and he's like what the fuck was that what'd you do and he fucking like throws his beer on me but he doesn't really get it on me he gets the beer on the chick I'm sitting next to and I'm like you fucking asshole you just attacked a girl dude <laughs> like, so I go and I go tell Chris Pontius my, my jackass buddy Chris Pontius I'm like dude this fucking guy just threw beer on my girl and, and Pontius, Pontius looks at me like all dead serious he goes are, you're not lying, are you, right? <laughs> are you telling me the truth? And I'm like, fuck yeah. And he goes, all right, that's it. He changes into a wrestling singlet and goes over, <laughs> the, goes over to the Electric Six trailer and to fucking fight. He says, I want to fight all six of you. Meanwhile, there's not six of them. They're just called the Electric Six. I want to fight all six. And said, this guy like opens up a, a little blind to like look out who's out there. And right when he opens up the blind, Pontius fucking 
punches through the glass trying to punch the guy. He's all fucking bleeding everywhere. Wow. They're fucking like, it was insane, dude. What that, year was this? Dude, Jeez. that would have been definitely 2000, 2004 or 2003. <laughs> Either Why 2000. Your ride or die, dude. Yeah, it actually it was 2004. It was, it was spring of Jesus, 2004. Genius. Or summer of 2004. Anyway, dude, I don't bring on fucking huge talent like Jonathan Davis for me to talk the whole fucking time. But no, I was... <laughs> I'm sure he's got stories like that. Yeah, what are the crazier crowds you've ever seen? How was? Yeah, uh, Paul's been wanting to ask you about Woodstock. Yeah, you're but... at Woodstock '99, which I know is kind of like in infamously was... sort of a shit show. No, not our day. Okay, our day was amazing. Um, we went on and it was an amazing show. The first show was was a. I can't, it's one of the highlights of my whole career. I'd never seen that many people and everybody was having a good time and there was no bullshit going on that night. It just got progressively worse because the the situation out there, water was 10 bucks. The outhouses were overfilling and shit. Piss was everywhere. Um, it got really, really bad out there. So I understand why everybody got pissed and started rioting. It wasn't a, a good setup. But for our, for our night was amazing. I remember flying over there we all rented a jet. We got this big, what was it, 737. It was us, Biscuit, and, and Ice Cube. And we all got on this plane, and we all rolled all to Woodstock. That was fun. The party on that thing was ridiculous. There was, like, the crew and everybody in the back. And it was this midsection, which Cube had, and we were all playing craps in there. And it was all gangsters <laughs> there. And then there was the front section, which was my section, because I like it cool and just chill. So I'd walk back there, play some craps, and then walk up to the front where I could just relax. And there was no craziness going on. But, I mean, that show was, man, it was nuts. There's so many people, and I'll never forget that show. I won't. And you, just, were, you were like a year sober then, right? Yeah, and I'd been, I think a year, I mean, yeah, I was a year sober. And I was still, I didn't know I was going through DTs. I was yeah. still going through. <laughs> just like in playing I kicked Woodstock. That, I kicked the cold turkey. I mean, I stopped. I, I'd shake and have anxiety attacks and all kinds of crazy shit um, in my bunk. That whole process, I didn't know that you go through this stuff. So I thought I was just going crazy. But I got in there and I did it and I went back and I couldn't even move because we'd been in the studio working on a record. We even played songs at that show that had no <laughs> lyrics. I was freestyling, just mumbling. <laughs> um some of the songs it was it was great but after that i went back and i they had to carry me back in the dressing room and i just i was dying i was in pain i hadn't moved like that in years and it was it was rad then the next day we got on plane went home it was a good time that's cool yeah, yeah hey, amazing I, I, i'm the guys are gonna make fun of me but like i've been obsessed with like near-death experiences for a long time right and i read that when you were five years old you had an asthma attack and you actually died did you, yeah, I got close to it. You got yeah. close to it. You didn't go to the other <laughs> side. You didn't. There's no experience. No. no, no, no. But that happened to me a lot. I've had a lot of near death experiences. I wasn't out there. Just like it was just like because I had asthma so bad. They'd sit me and they'd just tell my parents, "If we get him through the night, he has a chance." Um, a lot of stuff like that. I grew up in fucking tents. They would stick you in a tent over your bed and you'd lay there, and they gave you this fucking horrible drug called Quibron, which is like cocaine and alcohol <laughs> um i wanted that and, drug when yeah. i was a kid how, 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 old were you, how old were you when you even got that i was i died i had horrible asthma started when i was three years old so it was around being four five six years old that was wow. like the old drug they gave you and the only thing to open up your airways is like epi, epinephrine and stuff like that so it was it was drugs like that that would help me breathe and um yeah man it was that's that time sucked i remember I'd have to get blood gases. You know that little thing they put on your finger when you go in? Yeah. To check how much yeah. oxygen you have in your blood? Well, back in the 70s, they didn't have that shit. So what they do, they, and I was a little kid, they'd stick a needle in your fucking leg right next to your nuts and pull blood from your femoral artery so they could tell how much oxygen was in your blood. Oh, so that shit. was traumatic. Now they, when they do them, they do them in your wrist when you're older, but it was fucked. That's a bad time. That was I was sick a lot then. So did did the asthma somehow go away? Because I'm picturing you going crazy on stage, like having trouble breathing would be. Yeah, I mean, it, I grew out of it. I still have it. I'm on meds for it still, um, but it's not like it was. It's, I can breathe. It's fine. And I have a big oxygen tank on stage. Um, I hit all the time. Um, that gets me going. I get high off oxygen. It's really cool. That's great. <laughs> so, so like, uh, 
And you wanted to travel around with oxygen. Oh, I would say, well, yeah, this coronavirus is such a, <laughs> like, a, it's a crazy thing. You got to wear the masks. And I feel like yeah. the masks, it's like so uncomfortable. With the, so I, I, I was asking my buddy, Dr. Drew, what if I get like one of those oxygen tanks where you see people wheeling it around with them and just do that so that I can have that mask <laughs> on? Yeah. And he said it's bad to have pure oxygen all the time, all day. <laughs> yeah, you can't have that. That'll fuck you up. But I do it for, what is it? For the, the hour and a half we play, I'm pounding. I'll go through a whole tank. Rad. And I use the, the kind that they, that it's pressurized. So it's big, huge hits of oxygen. <laughs> I want some. Yeah, it's wow. Good. So it's did, good. did you ever smoke? Like, uh, or... When I got, yeah, I started smoking when I was, some in high school, then I quit. And then when I got in the corn, I smoked for a while. Then I quit again for 11 years. And then I smoked again for three or four years. And I haven't smoked for five or six years yeah, now. Man, it's been on and off. Fuck cigarettes, man. Yeah, they're horrible. I hate it. I was doing it because I was bored. I wanted to do something. I can't drink. I can't do anything. So I'm going to smoke. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> nope. Um, so do you, you have a tour? I mean, you can't tour and you got a new album. You know what? I'm sitting here watching paint. <laughs> <Not doing anything. laughs> You're watching paint dry. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it, it, 2021. Do you guys have an, a, a dates in mind, or yeah, we've, just... we've got dates lined up. We're gonna do the festival run in Europe, if that if that can happen, and then we'll probably do a summer tour. We're just switching our dates this year to next year. Hopefully, that'll happen. Um, I'm hoping and praying that that happens. If not, we'll just figure out what we're gonna do. Um, but right now, we're just sitting and hanging out i mean i'm having i mean i'm making the best of it uh i'm hanging out with my kids playing a lot of video games and doing things that i don't usually get to do because i'm always gone so that has helped a lot to be able to hang out with my boys because mm -hmm. i'm never home it, it sucks so that's been fun and i'm just doing stuff like this oh dude i love it man <laughs> we, we appreciate it so much <laughs> it's I, I all want, good what uh like I think of it, like, I was a big Motley Crue fan, you know, like right. growing up. You know, Me I, too. <laughs> I had this crazy story where, uh, you know, they came to my town and, and uh, I called every hotel in the Yellow Pages asking for a room by the name of their manager. And mm -hmm. and I got through to their, you know, manager's brother He picked up the phone in the room and he gave me backstage passes. So I, wow. I met them on a Girls, Girls, Girls tour in 1987 backstage, got my picture with them, I'm just a little kid. And uh, like I just, it was a really big, you know, big empowering moment for me where I was like, dude, I made this happen. You know, I can do anything, you know. And right. um, like looking at Motley Crue over the years, I've seen like, you know, they they did tours with uh, with Aerosmith, and that was a big deal. I've seen them like, you know, pictures with uh, like, you know, all the all the Rolling Stones. I don't know if they ever did a show with the Rolling Stones, but did you ever get to perform with just like people? That you were like it's just starstruck you're like oh my god i can't believe i just did a fucking show with mick jagger or something like that i did a show well, when we did the unplugged on mtv we did that unplugged uh thing i got to play with a cure so we did a mashup of in between days and make me bad and that was one of those moments for me yeah um, to hang out with all of them um one time i was in london i was hanging out at a bar and I look over and it's Simon Le Bon from Duran Duran, and that was another band I idolized. Sure, we we saw and I went something. Up to him. Oh, I went up, I, I went up to him and I introduced myself, and we ended up hanging out all night. He went to one of my shows. When I came back, that was one of those those moments. Um, a lot hanging out with Ozzy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, that still trips me out to this day that I sit and talk to Ozzy and check on him all the time. I mean, just heroes, man. Jimmy Page. I need my kid Zeppelin. I got, he, he signed something <laughs> for me. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's epic. There's been a ton of those experiences. I love being able to meet my heroes. And when they're really cool, it just even makes it better. For sure. We, we yeah. saw something uh, uh, the, that said that your first musical inspiration was uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, superstar. Yeah, mm -hmm. and your favorite band, Duran Duran. Yeah, they're my favorite <laughs> band. I, I'm all over the place, bro. But I was like a neuromantic kid. That's that in the '80s. That was my thing. And uh, dude, no excuses I, I, for that. I, I think that broad musical interests are important. 
I think that even played well into Corn. I was listening to your new album. You hear, you go into some of these very melodic, lyrical moments that that you can kind of hear that influence. Oh, totally, man. That's my. I love, I love that shit. That's me. It just worked because I didn't listen to metal music until the album that turned me on the metal was Vulgar Display of Power by Pantera, and I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> um, me back when I was a teenager, I listened to like freestyle new york freestyle music like stevie b and noel and stuff like that like now it's roller skate music but um i love that scene and i was in the total dj scene i didn't listen to i was like neuromatic and then i went into that like disco stuff and and then i got into industrial music but i never really listened to it and hmm. then i got turned on pantera then i started listening to more stuff then i got in corn right after that so i had no idea what the fuck i was doing at all hey, that's i just did it how, and how, that was the ticket. How long did it take you to learn the bagpipes? <laughs> yes. I always thought that'd be pretty cool to learn how to do those. It took me a year. A yeah, year? you had to start on this thing called a practice channer. And you start learning the songs on a practice channer. It looks like a fucking really fancy flutophone. <laughs> and then uh, you start on the bagpipes and you start with just the chanter, which is which makes the, 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 the melody. And you plug up the drones and you learn to do that and keep the air. You got to learn circular breathe. Uh, not circular breathe, there's a valve on it. So you just gotta learn how to keep the bag, the pressure correctly. And then you move up and you get one drone and then two drones and three, you work your way up, but it's a hard instrument to learn that. Wow. It's one constant tone. So you gotta use grace notes to articulate the, the music. And uh, it's a bitch. At, at, really the, at the next corn show, you should separate the crowd, play the bagpipes, <laughs> and just have them fucking run after each other. I'm gonna do that for you, bro. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> yeah, but please don't do that. Let me ask you, what are what like what are we promoting? We want you. To, we want everyone to buy your your album right that now, came we out last out year. The album, uh, the nothing, and we just did a cover of uh, Charlie Daniels' Devil, "Devil Went Down to Georgia," which is on Bandcamp, and um we're donating all the proceeds to this wonderful school called awaken youth which takes in kids that have lost a parent and are going through a hard time they take them in teach them you know social school everything they're just an amazing amazing organization um, my guitar player had um sent his daughter there and she is a totally completely different person and she's working there now and doing amazing things um and it was just near and dear to my heart that we would, would help her, you know, because there are a lot of kids that can't afford stuff like that need it. So they can get the money will go, go towards giving those kids scholarships and helping the school out. So that's what we wanted to do. And the platform so, to get that song is called it's on Band Bandcamp. Camp. It's on Bandcamp. <clears throat> okay, it's like Band Corn Camp. Bandcamp. And you can just donate whatever you can. And let's get that school some money so they can help some kids. That's, I mean, the big thing for me is helping kids. Um, and... I love doing that. Right on, man. I'm glad I asked you that. Yeah, super rad. Um, you're a huge fan of David Lynch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are, are, do you by chance uh, do Transcendental Meditation? Oh, no. Because we went to the, uh, I, I, I learned it at the David Lynch Foundation. So I was just curious if, really? you, if you meditated. He's a big practitioner. No, I just love yeah. his, I love his movies. I love, my, one of my favorite movies was Dune. Um, and... I know it makes me a sci-fi nerd, but, and I love, I mean, all his movies are amazing. So, um, Wild at Heart was my rock. David Lynch movie. Oh, that's such a good one. <laughs> it's a fucking dope ass <laughs> movie. Such a dope ass movie. All his movies are just in there. You just don't know what the hell is going on, but I like that. I yeah. really love his movies. So yeah, I'm a big Lynch fan. Hell yeah, man. Well, dude, I, I just can't thank you enough for doing this, dude. I, I'm going to tell everybody again right now to get your ass on over to Bandcamp and help some kids by purchasing Devil Went Down to Georgia by Corn. Yes. All right. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. Is he not the coolest dude ever? I mean, shit. If that podcast didn't put you in a great mood, then you're just a crappy person, okay? I happen to be in a fantastic mood. So for the people watching on YouTube, I want to show you something right now. I need to film it anyway. It's these new scars that I have on my legs, right? Because this project we were filming for, I'll tell you, it's the bucket list. Uh, I went sprinting, running. The moment that I had anesthesia injected into my spinal cavity, which rendered the lower half of my body completely paralyzed. And after I collapsed while sprinting uh, and I laid there paralyzed, they shot paintballs 
point blank. It was like shooting a fucking corpse, man. And uh, it didn't look like anything at the time, but clearly paintballs are no joke. We smeared tattoo ink over the wounds, but nothing really took. Got a little bit of ink in there on one, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Largely no ink. So we're just picking up this shot so that we have it. Does it all look good? Yeah, I think we're good. All right, great. Well, street team, you know what to do. I love you guys and thank you. Please let Jonathan Davis know how much I love him and how much you enjoyed this podcast. Thanks, guys.